Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, do these words sound familiar? My name is Lisa, and I don't want to talk to robots to switch the lights on. Well, if they do, first of all, stop talking to my missus. Uh, second of all, I can probably help. Uh, so I've heard those words a lot over the years, so I decided to create myself a touch panel on an Android device uh, so that I could take away some of this pain and allow Nisha to just press buttons on a panel so she doesn't have to use her voice like a civilized person. So we've got a fairly standard setup to begin with. We've got the clock here and we've got the weather here. Uh, simply because if you go to like a snooty home automation types house, they've always got these things on their panels and you're always envious because they look pretty. They're actually just a waste of screen real estate. I know what the weather's like. I can look out a window. Uh, but anyway, I've got that at the top there. This is beautiful widgets. If you've not heard of them, beautiful widgets do really nice widgets uh, that look beautiful. Uh, kind of on the tin there, really. Uh, down the left-hand side, we've got the Broadlink RM Pro stuff, which I'll show you how to set up shortly. Basically, I've got bedroom projector on and off, bedroom blind up and down, rear lights on and off, and main light on and off. Uh, these ones at the top are smaller than these ones by design. I chose that uh, because I wanted to be able to give my eye some separation between the lights uh, and the devices. I could make these exactly the same size if that was my preference. Over on the right hand side we've got the Philips Hue stuff. I've put these in really just to show you that it's possible. Uh, so you can have uh, a, uh, an item from a completely different company that looks a very similar style to these buttons. I picked these buttons because they were round and they were pretty. Uh, these buttons are from Ift, if this then that. Uh, so these buttons come by default and just happen to look like that. When you click one of these you get a little thing to tell you it's done it, which is great. And switch them off again. Cool. Uh, then we've got Nest Thermostat, IFT again, so exactly the same way as I created these, I created those, and I'll show you that shortly. Uh, this is set temperature to 19, and set temperature to 22, simply because I'm an old git, and all I do is go, I'm too hot, I'm too cold, I'm too hot. And all I ever do in the actual proper Nest app is just set it to either 19 or 22. So I thought, why not have those as widgets on my clever little panel? So there they are. Uh, then I've got Music Room on and off, which are just the same as these buttons over here, but for my Music Room. Uh, in the middle, I've got a Spotify widget, which has got simple play and then skip through the albums and then a little bit of artwork in the middle. Uh, that's just a standard Spotify widget, so that's nice and easy to install. Uh, these are Spotify widgets from a company called Sign, uh, and Sign basically just made widgets that you could click on and it starts a playlist automatically. So if I click on Gaffer Tapes, which is an album that Paul Hibbert happened to write, it starts playing it automatically, and instantaneously, you'll notice. Um, I think it's a bit of a shame. Actually, it's not. I mean, it launches Spotify, which I think most people will want it to do. Part of me wishes it just stayed on this screen, really. But that's fine. Um, so these are really cool. I love these widgets. I think they're a really good idea. I've got Nisha's playlist. I've got a Scar playlist. I've got my album. And I've got a 90s playlist. Um, and I can just replace those anytime I like very easily, just the same way as you do any other widget. Uh, so I'll show you how to use Sign in this video as well. In the middle, I've got a couple of things. I've got this one, which is just OK Google. I've got this one, which is Reverb. If you've not seen Reverb, it's basically a, an Alexa-based uh, automation system that can do a whole bunch of stuff, so I could actually switch all these lights on and off with my voice anyway. Uh, and then I've got this Toya Smart one, which is just a, a lamp in the music room. Uh, I'll probably get rid of that. It's just there again as another demonstration that you could control pretty much anything from one panel. Over on the right-hand side, I've got a couple of other things. I've got Droid Volume Up and Droid Volume Down. Uh, that's just controlling the Droid Box in the Music Room's volume. Uh, and then I've got uh, a Yahtzee uh, control here, which is controlling Kodi. See, if you haven't seen Yahtzee, Yahtzee's awesome remote control software for Kodi. It's super easy to set up, uh, and it just happens to have a great list of widgets. Uh, this is one here, where you can just control up, down, left, right, select, and all your kind of usual stuff. There's another widget across the middle here, which is your play, pause, forward, rewind, etc. And then there's another widget here, which is uh, most recent TV shows, and you can just sort of skip through those like that. That's why Android is so bloody brilliant. Uh, over here, I've got a list of favorites, uh, and I can just load Yahtzee up like that if I want to. And that's Yahtzee. So I have complete control now over my bedroom and, in fact, my music room um, from this one device. If you put something like this in a kitchen, 
you can have all of those things at your fingertips and all your friends, when they came into your kitchen, would go, oh my God, look at the weather. Oh my God, it's a clock. And then they wouldn't be interested in the rest of the stuff. And your kids would probably just keep pressing these buttons. But yeah, anyway, let's go see how I did it. I'm guessing you have things that you want to control and you're not just a weirdo watching me for fun. Uh, so I'm guessing you have either a Broadlink RM Pro or a Nest Thermostat or a uh, Philips Hue, something of that ilk. Uh, and basically I'm going to teach you how to control uh, those things using one of two methods, either the Broadlink method uh, or the if this then that method. Uh, both are super easy. Um, so the Broadlink RM Pro, if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's a device that can control very cheap RF plug sockets and light switches just by teaching it your remote controls that go with those devices. So if you've got a cheap light switch that came with a remote, uh, you can teach the RM Pro to do what the remote does and then use either your voice or in our case today, a tablet to control it instead. If you want to see how to do it your voice, uh, you can see this video here. Uh, if you want to know how to do it with a tablet, keep watching. Uh, so first thing I needed to install was Nova Launcher. So Nova Launcher enabled me to have a, a home screen that was far more customizable than the one that comes by default with your phone or your tablet. Uh, so Nova Launcher, I came with a bunch of stuff and I've wiped it all out so I've got a nice blank slate. So you're looking at Nova Launcher now. Uh, so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to uh, hold down on here and go to Widgets. Now I've installed the RM plugin from the Play Store. The RM plugin is the thing that makes the Broadlink stuff possible from this device. And all we've got to do is add their widget to the desktop just by dragging it and letting go on the desktop uh, and then clicking create. And then it's going to start to ask you how to do what you want it to do. So the first thing it wants to know is, it, is, it, is it a single device? And yes, it is a single device we're controlling. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is set the icon to look pretty. So I'm going to choose from their built-in icons because they've got some really nice ones already. I'm going to choose the on icon because what I'm doing is I'm setting up an on button to switch my lights on. Uh, the selected device is my Broadlink RM Pro. If you've got more than one Broadlink device, if you have a black bean and an RM Pro, you just need to select the one that you want to control. Uh, and then I'm going to learn a new code. So if you press learn new code and then press the on button on your remote in real life, it learns it and it's now asking me to name that button. So I'm going to call that bedroom light because that's the remote control press that I've just taught it. On. Done. OK. Done. Boom. So I've now got an on button for my bedroom lights on my desktop, but it is tiny. Uh, and this is where Nova Launcher comes into in handy because I can actually hold down on it and go to resize and then alter its size so it's bigger. Uh, so that's why I like to use Nova Launcher rather than the default um, Android desktop. Uh, so I now want to hold down on this again and go to widgets and then choose the RM plugin again, drag it to the desktop, create. So that's how you control the Broadlink RM Pro and clicking bedroom light on turns my bedroom light on, clicking bedroom light off turns my bedroom light off. Nice and easy. So if I want to do the same thing with Philips Hue, uh, then Philips Hue is controlled via IFT. If you haven't heard of IFT, if this then that is like the most amazing uh, internet based uh, database of cool things that you can control um, and basically make interact. So I can make my Android device interact with my Philips Hue by connecting both of them to if this then that. So the first thing to do is to install if this then that from the Play Store and then open it up. And I've got a few things in here already. If you're coming to it for the first time, you won't have anything and you just click the plus button. And you basically say, if this happens, then make that happen. So if this button widget is pressed, then make that happen. And you search for Philips Hue. And you can see the Philips Hue channel appears and you select it. And then I can choose to make any of these happen. Um, so this is the that portion. So I want it to turn on lights. So if you're doing this for the first time, it'll ask you to link your Philips Hue accounts. And that's how it's able to see your lights. Um, I've already linked my account so I can choose living room because that's one of my lights. Tick the box. And then press finish. So that now exists as a thing in the if this then that cloud out on the Internet. Um, and I want to create another one as well. I want to create Philips Hue turn off. So if this 
button widget is pressed, then make that happen. Search for Philips Hue. Select it. Turn off lights. And then select my living room. Tick the box. And I now have the capability to create two widgets, one widget called Turn On Living Room and one widget called Turn Off Living Room. So if I click Finish on that, and then go Home, I can now hold down here, go to Widgets, and choose an Ift widget. And we want Ift small, because we want a nice little circle. Create. And I can choose from any of these things that I've created. So you can see I've already been creating some things. There are a whole bunch of stuff uh, in the Ift cloud that I can choose from already. Uh, but these ones at the bottom are the ones that I've created. Turn off and turn on living room. So if I choose turn on living room, I get a little button. And again, I can resize it and make it the same size as these buttons over here. And then do the same thing for turn off living room. Just go to widgets. Awesome. So I can now control uh, both the RM Pro and the Philips Hue from one panel. Uh, I can do exactly the same thing with the Nest thermostat. So if I go back to Ift, and on the main screen, go to plus and say, if this button widget is pressed, then make that happen. And this time, choose Nest. And you'll be able to do this with anything that Ift can control. And Ift can control literally thousands of things. So I'm going to choose the Nest thermostat, and I'm going to say I want you to set the temperature on that thermostat to be 20 degrees. Done. And I want it to be in Celsius. I'm going to tick the box. You can see at the moment it says set temperature for bedroom thermostat to the house. That's a really long name for a button. We don't want that. So I'm going to click Edit Title. And I'm going to rename it to set temperature to 20. Done. And then finish. We'll go back to the home screen now and then hold down, go to widgets. I can now choose Ift small again to create an Ift widget. Click create. And I've now got set temperature to 20. Make it a decent size. I could do the same thing for as many of those as I like. So if you're a Spotify fan like I am, uh, you'll need to install two things, Spotify and Sign. Sign is the thing that allows you to create the widgets on your desktop for your Spotify playlists. And all you do is you open up Spotify and you share the playlists to Sign. So you pick your playlist, uh, go to the options for it, click share, scroll to the bottom and click more and choose sign. That has now added the Spotify playlist, 90s playlist, uh, to sign. And if I tick the box there, I can then just go to the little menu here and it will show me all the playlists that I've added from Spotify to sign. And I can just click the little button there and go add shortcut to home screen, back to home. And I've now got my Spotify playlist. So I can now drag that to whatever position I like. You'll notice that for whatever reason, I can't actually alter the size of this. So you might want to create your other icons in accordance with that uh, and space them out around it maybe. Maybe have a little group of four in the middle and put all of your other devices around it. Something similar to how I set mine up. Uh, but that's how you create Spotify playlists. Uh, creating beautiful widgets is simple. All you do is you download beautiful widgets, pick the one you want, and stick it on your desktop. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you can create your very own touch panel like you're some kind of posh person. Awesome. There's no reason to stop there, of course. You could, if you wanted to, use exactly the same method, but create a macro that at the touch of one button would switch a projector on, uh, lower the projector screen, start up Kodi, uh, and start the popcorn machine. If you're wealthy enough, of course, to own a popcorn machine, which I am not. Uh, if you're not a cave person and you want to do this with your voice, uh, please see my previous videos. But for all you cave people, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to help support my channel, there are links in the description to do that too. So just before we watch the usual outtakes of me looking like a knob, uh, I just have to let you guys know that I now am on Twitter. 
of all things. Uh, if you haven't followed me on Twitter already, go follow me on Twitter and see me making a general knob out of myself in daily life. See you next time. My name is Nisha, and I want to do the be be ka boo ka boo ka boo ka boo A touch panel, a touch, touching panel. There's no reason to stop there, of course. You could squeak your chair under your butt. I uh, loaded up the popcorn machine. How does a popcorn machine load? That's not a thing. <laughs>